Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. We've made the files the instructor uses in this tutorial available for free. Just click the link below in the video details to get these. Welcome to Google Sheets Basics. For many people, spreadsheets are scary, and that's probably because they think of numbers and math, but it can do so much more than that. Google Sheets is extremely versatile, and you can make it do almost anything that you want it to do. In this course, we're going to prove that by making our very own recipe book from scratch as we explore all of the basics and endless possibilities of Google Sheets. Hello everyone, I'm Heather Matisse, your instructor for this course. I'm a certified Google educator and a certified Google trainer. I have spent more than 10 years in the world of learning and development, specifically focusing on ed tech tools in the K-12 and higher education spaces. The Google tools are the backbone or springboard to innovative and structural practices, and it provides the unique opportunity for real-time collaboration, which deeply enriches the learning environment. And yes, I have taught kindergartners how to use Google Sheets, so I promise you can learn how to use Google Sheets too. In this course, we will begin with modules dedicated to start it, meaning starting a sheet from scratch, working with rows and columns, including my favorite feature, which is grouping. Then we'll look at picking a theme where I will try to convince you to never touch the font button on the toolbar. I know, insert eye roll, but I promise you it will save you so much time and effort, so trust me. And then we'll wrap up the section with all of the ins and outs of formatting with two pro tips, paint format and clear formatting. This section is full of keyboard shortcuts. Our next section, insert it, will cover all things inserting. We'll look at inserting links, inserting images, and inserting drawings. And by drawings, I don't mean you need to be an artist. Drawings refers to Google Drawings, which opens up a whole other world of possibilities, such as adding videos into our Google Sheet. We'll also look at inserting checkboxes, my new obsession, and then we'll wrap up this section by looking at inserting notes and comments, especially how these two are similar yet different and when to use them. Up next is Organize It, where we'll do a data cleanup and dive into conditional formatting, which many people love, but then we're going to dive into two things that kind of seem like hidden secrets, drop down menus in sales and other forms of data validation. These are especially useful when you are collaborating with others on a Google Sheet. You can put warnings or reject inputs other than what you specify. If someone is filling in information on your sheet, these are must-have features. Once we've created, inserted, and organized our sheet, we're going to work with it. In this section, we'll look at sorting and filtering, especially filter views. We'll cover the basics of formulas and functions, so you non-math people don't worry one bit. We're going to cover non-math-based formulas and functions as well, for example, Google Translate. We will take a close look at my favorite function, Query, which some argue can replace many other functions and even some features of pivot tables. So we'll look at that, and we'll wrap up this section by looking at how to work with multiple sheets. In the next section, Graph It, we'll focus on all the possible types of graphs and charts that we have in Google Sheets. There are a lot of possibilities here. Some may even surprise you, and we'll even dive into how to edit and customize a chart by looking at the chart editor. And just when your brain is at maximum capacity, the last section, Share It, will cover how to share your amazing recipe book that you've created. We'll look at collaboration features, and then our last steps will be downloading, printing, and publishing our sheet. Google Sheets goes well beyond the world of education where I am and far beyond the business world as well. For example, you just saw a sneak peek of the recipe book that you will build throughout this course. You can also use Google Sheets for a personal budget, planning a vacation that does include maps, planning a landscaping project or some sort of house renovation. Maybe it's to create an organizational chart or a tree map. 
even creating a catalog to post on a site or a blog. And yes, I even used a Google Sheet to create my own app. So spreadsheets don't seem so scary after all, right? They're not just math and numbers and data. Google Sheets has endless possibilities, so buckle up your seatbelt and let's get started. Welcome back everyone. Let's get started by looking at how to access and create a new Google Sheet. So there's more than one way to do this. So we're going to start with probably the most common way, and that is accessing Google Sheets from Google Drive. So here we are in Google Drive. From the top left corner, click New. And from the drop down menu that appears, you have several options, including starting a new doc sheet, slide, form, or even more options. Let's first look at what happens when we click Google Sheets. A new window will open and notice that we have a new blank untitled Google Sheet. That was quick and easy, right? So let's go back and look at the other options that we had. Again, we are in Google Drive, so let's click New in the top left corner. And this time, let's click, or you can also just hover, over the little arrow beside of Google Sheets. Two options appear, blank spreadsheet and from a template. So blank spreadsheet is what we just did. So you can see that there are two ways to start a blank spreadsheet. You can click directly on Google Sheets, or you can click on blank spreadsheet when you hover over that little arrow. Now, our other option here in, in Google Drive is from a template. When we select this option, a new tab opens to the Google Sheets template gallery. Keep in mind that this gallery is constantly being updated, so make sure to visit it often for the newest additions. Here in the gallery, we see a list of recent templates across the top followed by a set of personal templates such as budgets and calendars. Below that is a section of work templates, project management templates, and education. You can click on a template of your choice and it opens in a new tab ready for you to use, which all of that we're going to get into throughout this course. So we've created a blank spreadsheet and we've created a template. So let's look back in Google Drive. We now see that both of these spreadsheets that we've created are here in Google Drive. So this right here is why the most common way to start a Google spreadsheet is from Google Drive. I started within the folder that I wanted to work from and the spreadsheet was automatically placed here so I don't have to worry about organizing my files later. It's already here where I want it to be. The less common option is to go directly to Google. You then search for Google Sheets. You click on Google Sheets and then here you are. You can see at the top, you can start a blank spreadsheet. You can also pick a template or below is a list of your recent spreadsheets. Okay, so creating from scratch, check. But what if you already have a set of data or information in an Excel document? Again, there is more than one way to do this. Yes, you'll see that as a common theme with Google, that there is more than one way to do most things. It gives you options for what works best for you. Let's start with what is the most common option, and that is starting in Google Drive. So I have this set of data in Excel, but it's not already in Drive. Yours may already be there, but let's look at how to get it into Google Drive if it's not already there. Let's click our trusty new button in the top left corner, click File Upload, select the file, and then click Open. Or you can drag and drop the file from your computer like this. Either option works. So once it is uploaded, I want you to notice the difference in this green icon. One is Google Sheets and the other one is Excel. Let's open the Excel file. It will take you to what is called Office Editing, which lets you edit Office files and the 
big key here is that the file or extension stays the same. You can easily convert it to Sheets by clicking File, Save as Google Sheets. It looks the same, right? Or no? What do you think? The answer is no. They are not the same. I want you to look at the top and you can see that the extension is not there. That is how you know that you are using Google Sheets versus Excel. So let's go back to Google Drive. There are now two versions of the same set of data. Notice the Sheets version versus the Excel version. The difference is in the icon. When we had them open, the difference was in the extension that you could see at the top. What I find helpful is to rename these documents. I like to label the original Excel document as original, or I give it a date. You can do the same thing with Google Sheets. The key here is to make it so that you remember which one it is that you are currently working with and which one is the older version. Okay, so that's not all. Remember, there's more than one way to do a lot of things in Google. So another way to do this is to open a Google Sheet. And in this case, we already have an untitled one from earlier. And at the top, click File and Import. I can upload my Excel file. Again, I can select that from my menu or just drag and drop it like this. And so here is the big difference. You can create a new spreadsheet with this data. You can insert it as new sheets, meaning whatever sheets you already have will be untouched and it just tacks these on as new sheets or new tabs to the right. Or I can wipe out everything that's already on this spreadsheet and replace it with this data that I'm importing. So let's go with insert new sheets so that you can see what that looks like and check if you want to import the theme or not, and then click import data. Okay. And see that first sheet is still intact and all the new data was imported as new sheets or tabs to the right. So let's return to where we started in Google drive. We see all the files that we have created today. Remember to watch out for those icons as they tell you which one is Google Sheets and which one is Excel. Now, we're learning about Google Sheets in this course, but we spent a bit of time today in Google Drive, and that's okay because it's just Google, right? It's all a part of the Google suite of tools. So in our next module, we're going to take a look at other Google features that are built right into Google Sheets that you may already be familiar with. So meet me over in the next module. Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Welcome back everyone. Now that you know how to access Google Sheets from your Google Drive, from a template or from using existing data from an Excel spreadsheet, are you ready to learn the basics of Google Sheets? Or are you a bit nervous about all that Google Sheets entails and the endless possibilities that awaits? Or a little bit of both. So let's get set up for success and go over some of the transferable skills that you probably already have under your belt that you can apply here to Google Sheets. Because after all, it's just Google. So let's start in the top left. Like many of the other Google suite of tools, you can click and give your document a title and rename it at any time. To the right, you have a star, which will put it in your starred files in Google Drive for quick access. Next is our folder icon, which helps us move and organize our files in Google Drive. So let's pause right there. Remember in our last module, we learned that we could go directly to Google Drive. We can open the folder where we want this file to go, click new, and then we, get, we can get started. But you may have started working on your file and realized it needs to actually belong somewhere else than where you actually started it. That's what this button is for, so use it. Trust me, don't let your Google Drive turn into a deep dark abyss of files. Click on your folder and move it to where you want it to go. Next up, we have our cloud status. This is something that you can look at if you're wanting to use the file offline. 
and moving right along, notice this message in the center will change. Sheets will auto save just like all other Google tools. You can also click on this message to take you directly to version history. From here, you can see previous versions of this document. What is highlighted is, is what has changed that day or time. If someone is actually working on this document with you, each person will be given a different color. You can even give these versions names, which is really great when this is a shared file or you're working on a larger project. And in times of despair over a messed up spreadsheet, you can click restore this version in the top left corner. Now to get back out of here, click the back arrow in the top left corner. And here we are back into our Google Sheet. So let's move right along to the top right corner. Okay, so speaking of sharing and collaboration, why do people love these Google tools? It's the real-time collaboration. So over on the top right, you can click share to give someone else access with viewing or editing rights so that they can collaborate with you. We will go into greater detail with this feature in a separate module in this course, but it's one of the reasons people love the Google tools. So the last things we have over here on the right is the present button, which is when you want to share your screen during a Google Meet. And Google Meet is basically Google's in-house version of Zoom. And then we also have the comment feature. Now to use the comment feature, you can right click on a cell and select comment. Now the comment feature is another transferable skill you may already have in your toolbox, but it is a bit unique when using it with sheets. So we will actually dive deeper into that as well in another module in this course. So when collaborating with someone on a project, this is another great Google feature to have in your pocket. Let's take a closer look at our toolbar and menu. You will see some things here in sheets that you will see in other Google tools, especially under the file menu. The other menu that you may be familiar with already is the one that is called extensions. Now, Google Sheets has endless possibilities. You can make it do almost anything you want it to do, and sometimes that means using a bit of help from your friends. You have add-ons, macros, scripts, and apps. Just like in other Google tools, these apps, scripts, and add-ons help you improve the functionality of your project. Your possibilities really are endless. Okay, so how do you feel about getting started with Google Sheets now? Did you see some things that you are already familiar with and any transferable skills that you could utilize right out of the gate to bring with you? Hopefully. So now in our next module, we're going to really get started on our first Google Sheet. So come on and meet me over in the next module. Welcome back everyone. You've learned how to get started by accessing Google Sheets through Google Drive. You've also learned how to access it by Googling Google Sheets and converting it from an existing Excel document. You've also looked at some transferable skills that you may already have coming into this particular Google tool. So let's make sure we're fully oriented and take our first step into our own sheet from scratch. Here I am in my Google Drive where we were a few modules ago. We have this untitled sheet that we created and never did anything with it. So let's double click it so that it opens into a new tab. First thing we need to do is give it a name. Okay, so what are we going to build? Remember I told you Google Sheets has endless possibilities. And not only that, it doesn't have to be all about data, numbers, math, oh my. So we're going to prove that by building a recipe book. Yes, a recipe book, your own family recipe book. So let's click up here in the top left and use your family's name, for example. I'm going to write the Matisse recipes. You give it the name that you want to use. All right, great. Now let's take a look around. We briefly touched on the menu, but let's take a closer look. We looked at file, so let's look at edit. Actually, many people don't even use this menu other than to use find and replace because these are all great, easy keyboard shortcuts like copy and paste and undo, all of which we will cover. And next is insert. You won't use it much either, except this one little section, charts, pivot tables, images, drawings, and that's because it's already built in from the sheet itself without having to rely on this menu. 
Now you also have format and data seem to be the two menus you will come to the most up here, but again, many of these things you can do directly from the sheet and the toolbar without having to come up here to the menu. So let's take a look at this toolbar. You have your undo redo buttons, you have print, and then you also have paint format, and then you have zoom. Now the rest of this toolbar is broken into sections. This first section, think of it as formatting the data itself and what that data is. The next sections are for what that data looks like. So bold, color, alignment. And then we have a section for, think of it as manipulating the data. So that was what is the data, how that data looks, and then the data manipulation. So now you are familiar with the toolbar and the menu. So the last thing is what's at the bottom. Now we're looking down here at the bottom. There are multiple sheets or tabs. Click the plus to add more sheets and double click to rename that tab and single click to flip between the tabs. There is much more to do with these. So we will actually go into a whole module later on that goes into much more detail about these extra sheets down at the bottom. The last thing down here is explore. We'll play with this along the way because you will see it's like an assistant. When you highlight data or certain cells, what it provides you with will change. If you highlight an obvious data set that is great for graphing, it's going to give you some graph options. If you highlight certain data points, it may suggest different functions or formulas that you could use. Here's my favorite trick over here. Select a few cells and it will tell you how many you are, you have selected. No more having to count yourself. So wondering how many recipes total that you have highlight and there you go. It tells you how quick and easy is that? It's a great little built in trick. All right, everyone. So that was a very quick orientation. So you saw me add a few cells to our sheet. So in the next module, the real action begins. We will actually add to our recipe book. So go find your favorite recipes. And I promise it's okay if they are straight from the internet and not written in a book passed down from grandma. And any and all recipes will do. So gather your recipes and meet me over in the next module. All right, welcome back everyone. Who got hungry looking at all of those recipes? Well, I sure did. So cookies are in the oven, so let's get started with cells in Google Sheets. Here we are in our family recipe book that we started. So remember, what you named yours may be slightly different and unique to you. So let's start off by adding some column headers to our recipe book. We will list our recipes down the left, so that's one recipe on each row. Basically, we're creating a table, right? So before we do that, let me just say this is a blank canvas. You do not, and I repeat, do not have to create a table when using sheets. Remember, sheets has endless possibilities and it goes beyond data and tables. It doesn't always have to be tables. You can make it work for almost any project that you are doing. Just a little side note, because we are creating a table, that does not mean sheets has to always be tables. Okay, so back to our recipe book. Let's add some column headings. Our first column, we have the actual title of our recipes. Next, we will want to list out our ingredients, probably followed by the directions for that recipe. A few extra columns we may want to add to help us search our recipe book later on when we've filled it up. Um, let's see, we can filter by appetizer versus dessert or breakfast or main dish. So let's call that column what course it is. And that means we may want to also filter by the protein. Is it meat, poultry, seafood, etc. Maybe that will help if we only have chicken in the fridge and we're looking for a main dish that has chicken. And let's add a temporary column for the link. I say temporary because there are some great tricks for making this better, but that's going to be covered in a later module. So this is going to work for now. This is a place for you to put in that link. Now let's look back on the left and add a few recipes. I'm going to add just a few, enough for me to play with. I encourage you to do the same. Add maybe five recipes, 10 if you're filling up to it. Try not to get too excited and add more than that though, because in a few modules, 
we're going to learn how to add images and links if the recipe is online. So you may want to wait before adding all of those extra recipes so that you don't have to go back and double work. So let's get a few recipes in here. I am using the keyboard shortcuts Command C to copy and Command V to paste on a Mac. If you are on a PC, that would be Control C and Control V. So I'm copying and pasting from some blogs. You copy and paste over a couple of your recipes as well. And ta-da! Now, one little trick. How did I get those ingredients and step-by-step -step directions to separate out on the individual rows? Because if you click on a cell, or if you double click, same thing, I'm going to type in flour and press enter. It takes me to the next row. So enter doesn't work. Let's try again. Okay, we have flour. We also need eggs. So here's the trick. Press Command Enter on a Mac or Control Enter on a PC. And there we go. How exciting is that little trick? It makes data and information look so much cleaner and easier to read. If you paste an in information that doesn't look nice like this, go through and clean it up with this easy little keyboard shortcut trick. It's looking great so far, so let's look at moving some of these cells. If you start typing in the wrong spot, you don't need to delete it. You can copy and paste it, remember our keyboard shortcuts for that, Command or Control C and V for copy and paste, or you can select the cell, it turns blue, and put your mouse on the edge. You are looking for your mouse to turn into a hand like it's grabbing the bar. Click, drag, and drop it where you want it. The same is true for multiple cells. So you can move multiple cells at one time as well as doing the same thing. So highlight, your mouse turns to the little hand icon and you can drag and drop. Now me, personally, I copy and paste and I don't even know why. So find what works for you. They are both the same. Last little thing. Let's merge some cells together. What if you have two versions of green bean casserole? Do you want two separate entries for that? Or maybe you even have five entries for five versions because you know people have their own way of doing green bean casserole. Oven, stove, crock pot, Campbell's soup, or how dare you put Campbell's in a green bean casserole? There's so many ways. So over on the left, let's find the green bean casserole. We're going to go with there are two versions of this recipe. I'm going to go in below it and add the ingredients and I'm going to add the directions and fill everything else in. I'm just copying and pasting over like we did before. And now we want the recipe title and the image to be the same, right? Because it's just one green bean casserole, just two different ways of doing the recipe. So highlight the cells that we will merge that are going to become one and click on the merge icon on the toolbar. Now we have one recipe listed in column A, but we have both different sets of recipes listed for us to pick from. When you click on the set of merged cells, look up at the toolbar. The merge icon is highlighted telling us that this is merged, and if you click the drop down arrow, you will see the options such as to unmerge if you ever needed to. Okay, everyone, the beginnings of our recipe book. How exciting. But some of these rows and columns are not looking great. We've learned about cells and now we need to look more closely at rows and at columns so we can start cleaning this up. So meet me over in the next module and let's learn how to do that. Welcome back everyone. We've learned about cells and our recipe book has a few recipes in it, but it doesn't look so great. We need to take a closer look at rows and columns so we can clean it up before we get too much further along. All right, so here we are in our recipe book. We have six columns and we have about six rows, give or take some, depending on how many recipes that you added to your recipe book. So what would happen if we wanted to add more rows and more columns? Just like we looked at before with Google, there's more than one way to do this. So one way is to come over here to the right column. We're going to do column G and to go ahead and type what our next column would be. 
So for this recipe book, maybe we want to add in a column with how much time it takes to do a certain recipe. That is something that would be very helpful when we want to filter through our gigantic recipe book that we will have at the very end. So that's a great column to add. So now the question is, where do we actually want column G? Is that something we would maybe want all the way to the left, right after the recipe and before the ingredients? Or do we want it somewhere else? Because right now it's all the way to the right on our table. So let's pick up column G. So you're going to click and hold and move it over to a place that we would want it. So to do that, again, click on column G at the top, at the very top, hold, and notice that it highlights the entire column. You will see a dark gray line to the left, and that is telling us where this column is going to live. So as I move my mouse over to the left, you see that gray line is telling me if I let go right now, this is where the column will now live. So drag it all the way over to the left until we have the dark gray line showing us that it's going to go in between A and B. Now I'm going to let go. You'll see that our column is now column B and it is located between A and C. So that is how we add and move a column in our spreadsheet. Those actions that we just took are the exact same that you can do with rows. You can click and hold on a row number, it highlights, and you can drag and drop that row up or down. Just pay attention to that dark gray line telling you where it's going to drop. That was one way to add more rows or columns. Let's look at another way. Another column that we would maybe want to add to our recipe book is a column to put a picture of that dish. Because when we're looking at a recipe book, it would be helpful if we saw pictures of that food instead of just the title. Pictures speak louder than words, right? So to do this, where would we want our picture to be? Do you want your picture to be the first column? Or would you like for it to be column B so that's right after the title? Where would you want it to be? So that is your first step is to determine where would you want this new column or this new row to be. For now, I think I would like the picture for my recipes to be in column B. So I'm going to click on column A, but you could actually click column B, which I'll show you in just a second. So for right now, we're going to start by clicking on column A and I want you to right click on it. You can select insert column to the right. Now, if I had actually clicked on column B, I would be selecting insert column to the left. So that's why I said you could really pick either one. You just need to know where you want your new column to go and you're going to right click and then you're going to click insert to the left or insert to the right, depending on where you want it to go. Now our green bean casserole, remember we merged these two cells. So we had one title. We're going to want to have one picture, so let's merge those cells together as well. So remember, we're going to highlight these two cells that are going to be merged and then click Merge on the toolbar. Back to adding rows and columns. That's not all. There are actually two more ways for us to add a column or row. When you have that column selected, click the Insert menu, click Column, and select to insert one to the left or to the right. The same is true for rows. You can select, click Insert, and then Row and then insert above or below. The final way is the quickest. You can use the keyboard shortcuts. Select the column and use Command Option equals on a Mac or Control Alt equals on a PC, and it inserts a column to the left. For a row, you can do the same keyboard shortcut and it inserts one row above. With this option, you need to remember that it will always insert to the left or insert above for a row. That was four different ways to add rows and columns. Find which one works best for you. I personally usually use the keyboard shortcut or I right click on the column or the row and then I select insert. Now, do you have too many rows and columns from playing around? You can right click and select delete or you can use the keyboard shortcut command option minus on a Mac or control alt minus on a PC. It's easy to remember because they are beside each other on the keyboard. You just need to remember that equals means to add and minus means to take away or remove. So that was part one of rows and columns. Meet me over in the part two module so that we can continue looking at these rows and columns. We're going to look at how to resize, how to hide, group, and how to freeze.
Welcome back everyone. So this is part two. In part one, we just looked at how to add these rows and columns. And here in part two, we're going to focus on how to resize, how to hide, group, and how to freeze our rows and columns. Next up is resizing. Our spreadsheet is still looking like a mess. There is, of course, you're going to laugh, more than one way for us to resize our columns and rows. If you do not care about the exact size of the column or the row, you can actually just take your mouse to the very edge of the column or the row heading, hover your mouse over the edge of that column or that row, and your mouse turns into an arrow. For columns, that arrow points to the right, and for rows, that arrow points up. Don't let that confuse you. You can actually drag and resize rows and columns in both directions. So let's make our directions column much bigger. We may end up wanting that to be really nice for us and big so that we can really read it later on. This same concept can be applied for resizing multiple columns or multiple rows. We can select column F and G and then resize. So we hover over the edge just like we did. We have that little arrow. We now, we, now we can click, drag, and drop. We can make this smaller or we can make this larger. This little trick is super nice because now these two columns are the exact same size as each other. So that means they resized proportionally. As opposed to doing it one by one and just eyeballing it, they may have ended up technically different sizes. So this keeps these two these two columns the exact same size as each other, which is a really nice trick. It's also really great when you want to resize several columns or several rows at a time, especially if you're wanting to keep those sizes consistent as you increase them or decrease them instead of just eyeballing it. Now our time column. I'm going to add some time really quick so I can show you a little trick that I love. Time is a small number in this big cell. So I could manually resize like we were just doing, or I can do a double left click. So don't use the right click, do a double left click and watch it snap the size of the column right to fit the data. That looks so nice and so clean. Take a few seconds to play around with resizing. If you feel like you messed it up or you want everything to be perfect, we actually have a second way of resizing. Right click on the column or the row and select resize. Type in the number of pixels you want it to be. You can also select multiple columns and rows at a time. This is great when you know the exact pixels you need. Otherwise, you can use our first option, which was drag and drop and just eyeball it. So take some time to resize everything and make it look nice. I know that the ingredients in the directions column may be annoying you a little bit right now, but very soon in a coming module, we will look at formatting so that those cells are much easier to read. So just hold on for now. One more great thing we can do to clean up this data is to hide and group columns and rows. As we begin working on adding recipes or when we're looking for something to cook for dinner, there may be things that we want to hide. So for example, this directions column is going to be a bit of a distraction. Maybe even the ingredients column will be as well. So we can come to the top and right click and select hide. These double arrows appear to tell you that there is a hidden column or, or row if you were hiding a row. You can also select multiple rows or columns, right click, hide, and they all hide. So click those double arrows and they will reappear. When you're searching for a good meal to cook tonight, we're probably going to want to hide these two columns, ingredients and directions, every single time. Because that's an action we will take often, we can use what's called a group. And I love this feature. It feels like a hidden secret. Highlight these two columns, right click, more actions, and group. Groups are shown with a plus or a minus and this little line. Click the minus to close it and then click the plus to open it back up. So how fantastic is that? Use the hide feature for something more temporarily or like a one-time thing. Use the group feature for something that you know you will want to open and close often or at least more than once. So again, everything we did with the column can be applied to rows. 
Okay, last little trick. I know your mind is about to explode. It's called freezing. So let's freeze our top row and our first column so that as we scroll, we will still see our headings. To do that, hover over these bars on the top left corner. Drag this one to the right so that we freeze column A or column B if you prefer and you want the pictures to be kept with the recipe title, but that's your personal preference. And then drag this one down so that we freeze the first row. Now look, when we scroll, these two stay frozen. This will be great as our recipe book gets filled up and we're working with large amounts of recipes in here and we're trying to find our way around. All right, so what do you think? How does your recipe book look now? Still not the best looking thing, so in our next module we will get into the fun part and that is the theme and formatting and making this look even better. So yes, all the colors that will make this spreadsheet stand out. And then we will get into more details with formatting so this recipe book will be much more functional. So come join me in the next module. Welcome back everyone. Our recipe book is looking better, but it still looks very plain. So in this video, we're going to look at formatting and in particular, we're going to look at our theme and our alternating colors. By the time we are done, we will have a much better looking recipe book than what it looks like right now. So let's get started. All right, so here we are in our recipe book that we have been building. Let's start at the top and click on format. In this menu, you will see that we have several options, and the first option is theme. Now, if we look towards the bottom, we will see another option for alternating colors. We will cover both of those in this video. We're gonna start with setting up our theme, so let's click on theme. This menu opens up on the right, and we can see a set of themes that are already built in. Click on these themes, and then you can click customize to reveal the different color palettes that are included in these themes. By default, any Google Sheet that you create will be set to the standard theme. Start by picking a theme that is close to what you already like and what appeals to you. It is something that you can build up from, so it's just to get an idea and maybe spark some inspiration. I'm going to click on the Streamline theme and I'm going to click Customize. From here, I can select what font I want to be standard throughout my Google Sheet and then I can select what I would like for my text to be. So what color I want that to be. Now notice that the next set of colors come into play when we have charts and graphs, which we don't really have any of those yet, but these are the colors that would be in those charts and graphs once we actually add those later. I can customize these colors to my liking. Personally, I like to use a free color palette generator that I get from the internet and it helps me come up with a set of colors. And then I'm going to show you where you're going to take those hex codes from those generators and put those into here. All right. So what I really like to change is the color of the hyperlinks, which we're going to get to in a coming module, but we're going to change that color now. So you can click on the color and select from the list what we have like this or click here to customize the color. If you know the hex code, like I said, from some sort of color palette generator that you're that you're using, you can copy and paste that here into this little box. Okay, so I'm gonna go with this color for my hyperlinks because I like this color. Take some time to get your colors set up the way that you would like them. And when you're done, you can click done when you're finished. And you're gonna wanna click this little X in the top right corner to get this menu out of your view so that you can see more of your spreadsheet. All right, we're back in our recipe book. We're going to go through the same process as we did with the theme. So click on the format menu at the top and select alternating colors from that drop down menu. This window opens on the right and it tries to be really smart and help you by going ahead and giving you alternating colors in gray for the area that it thinks that you need. Depending on where your mouse was before you actually clicked on the format menu and then alternating colors, it may have actually just colored a single cell. So the first thing we need to do is look up at the very top where it says apply to range. Click on the little four square icon, which represents our range, which is on our sheet. So it's just an area and another pop-up appears. 
You can delete out whatever is in that space, and now that it is empty, you can actually click on the square in the top left corner, and that selects our entire sheet. It is in between the A and the 1. So one click and it highlights our entire sheet. Isn't that such a cool trick? So for this recipe book, we want to apply these alternating colors to the entire sheet. But you could have also just selected a very specific area or range, kind of like this. Notice that I started with that data range empty. I deleted it out. And as I highlight the cells, it is writing the range for me. So if you have the correct thing and you're ready to go, you can click OK. There are some default styles, so go ahead and play around with these. You may like one of these already, so pick one of these styles that is close to something you're looking for, and of course we can, we can customize them. So now down in the middle section, you can personalize this to the header color and then the alternating colors that you prefer to use. So for example, you may like this header color, but you may find that the alternating colors are a little bit too dark or too bright for your liking. So for example, I'm going to change color 2 and lighten it up just a little bit. We can click on this color drop down menu. Now that we see at the top are the theme colors and then we see our customized section followed by a section of standard colors. I want you to play around and pick what you would like. I'm going to customize this color and lighten it up a little bit. So I'm going to click on the plus button in the customize section and I'm going to drag the color towards the white to lighten it up. You're going to click OK to save your changes. And you can also change the header. You can change it to whatever you like. I'm going to pick a color from my theme. Remember, that's why it's great to have a theme, because now I have those colors right here. When you're satisfied, click Done. If you don't like using the alternating colors feature, that's perfectly fine. Some people don't like to use that. You can click remove at the bottom. So you saw the theme colors when we were changing out these colors. It's a great example of why you want to set up a theme before you start formatting your Google Sheet. Honestly, sometimes I start with alternating colors first because they do seem so dominating, and then I work backwards to pick theme colors to match what I did here with alternating colors. So sometimes I end up coming back and changing these alternating colors once I do have a theme picked out. It just really all depends. You can start with one or the other first. As long as you get a theme settled before moving forward with all of your other formatting. So test it out, find out works best for you and your workflow. All right, guys, we made it. Our recipe book isn't looking as boring as it was when we started, but there are still a few formatting issues that we have left to handle. So we're going to dive deep into the toolbar and format all of this data in the next module so it will finally not look like such a mess. So come on and meet me over there in the next module. Welcome back, everyone. Wow, our recipe book has come a long way. We have a few more things to finish formatting and cleaning up, all of which we will wrap up in this module. So by the end of this module, it will be presentable and ready for us to fill it up with all of the recipes that we love. So let's dive right in. We're going to take a look at formatting along the toolbar as well as formatting in the drop down menu. Remember from our previous modules, the toolbar and the format drop down menu are the same. That makes two ways to do one thing. Add in some keyboard shortcuts and you have three ways to do the same formatting actions that we are going to learn about. So remember to test them out and find out what works best for you and your workflow. We're going to work our way left to right across our toolbar. Let's look at the very first set of formatting tools. These are to format the type of data that we have. I'm going to quickly add one more column for date so that we can test this out and play. So to format a set of data, remember we can highlight all of those cells at once, or we can right click on that column or row header and it highlights the entire thing. All right, so now that our data is selected, let's look up at the toolbar. We have a quick action to turn our data into currency or percentage. We also can move the decimal point. 
And the last one is a change from an auto format to something more specific. So I'm going to select date. And so now look at it. It hasn't really changed much and that looks fine, but I want to see just the month and just the year. So I'm going to customize that a little bit. So this time I'm going to click on custom date from that drop down menu and we get this little pop up. I can really customize the way I want it to appear. So let's play around with these from the month drop down menu. I can select one of these many options. I'm going to go with month as abbreviation. Next, I don't think I really want the actual day, so I can delete that. And I'm going to set my year to full year. Now, there are two forward slashes in there. So it, it would read, for example, August slash slash 2022. And I don't really want that, so I'm going to take out those slashes. So we can click and remove those. And instead, I'm going to put in a space bar. And then we're ready. We can click apply. Now, my dates appear the way I would like them. Here's the cool part. I can still type in as a number and it will convert to the format that I have customized it to. This is extra useful when I have data coming from a location that was recorded as a date and timestamp. I can customize it the way I want it to actually appear, but it still reads from that traditional numeric way and it formats it the way that I want to see it. Let's move along on our toolbar. Next is font. Don't touch it. Yeah, I know we're learning all about Google Sheets and I'm telling you to not touch something. So yeah, don't touch it. <laughs> Why not? It's in our theme. If you want to change it, remember to go to your theme. The exception would be for special titles or honestly, even then, do you really need to change the font to put an emphasis on it. Can you establish it another way through color or font size? Try to minimize the number of fonts used so it's easier to view. And I'll show you why you don't want to do this um, and why you want to change it in the theme later on in this video as we talk about clear formatting. So yeah, don't touch it. <laughs> Next, we have font size. Row and column labels are great to increase the size. So let's select our entire first row and increase the size to 12 and let's bold it as well. So for mine, I did choose a very dark color to fill it in. Remember when we did that with our alternating colors. So I'm going to invert my text color to white and only for this heading bar so that it really stands out. Look at that. See how that pops out? Did you see the color palette when we were doing all of that? I had a choice of theme colors, custom colors, and a default set of colors. That's yet again another reason why you want to have the theme set up before you begin working with formatting. Now before we keep going, because I increased the size and made the text bold, do you have columns that need to be resized? Remember we learned in previous modules how to resize those columns and rows. You can hover, click, hold, drag and drop. You can also double click, which is my favorite way because it will snap it to fit the data. So go ahead and take a couple minutes to work on changing your font size, making it bold, resizing as needed. Next up is our fill color. That is what color is used to fill a single cell or a set of cells. After that is our borders. These are great for helping separate and chunk data. With both of these options, you select your data first, and then you click on the icon on the toolbar. So I'm going to color my recipe column just like that. So remember, we click, go to fill color, and pick a color. Again, it's a great reason to have colors in your theme, so you can pick from one of those. And now borders are similar. You select your data, you click on the borders icon, but first, select your style and select your color on the right and then you can select your different types of borders. I like to do this on smaller tables because you don't really get to see it on very large tables like this. I do like to use it for breaking up data, especially with this little dotted line and a lighter color, like a light gray. So play around with that and see what looks best for you. And then meet me over in part two so we can continue learning about this. We're going to cover alignment and wrapping. We're also going to look at our format menu and clear formatting. So come on over and meet me over in the next module.
Welcome back to part two of formatting here in Google Sheets. Let's dive right in. The next thing on our toolbar is very important, so never skip out on these formatting tools. First up is horizontal alignment, which you're probably already familiar with, the left, center, and right alignment. Don't shy away from our vertical alignment, especially when using Google Sheets. With these large columns of ingredients and directions, those will be great to align to the top. The recipe titles, and maybe even our headers across the top row, would be great to be center aligned. Take a few minutes to adjust your data and to fit the way you want it to look. Now, here is a magical button. This should be your best friend when using Google Sheets. It has the power to single-handedly clean up the mess that is on your spreadsheet. It's called text wrapping. Is there anything we don't want to wrap? Probably not. So let's select the whole spreadsheet, click on text wrapping, and select wrap. Nice, look at that. Do you need to do some resizing of the columns again? Uh, maybe, so play around with that. Remember there are two ways for us to resize and do what looks best for your spreadsheet. Now, the column with our links. We're going to be removing those in a coming module, but if for some reason you had a link like this or something that was really long, maybe not necessary for you to see, you can actually come over to this column, select the whole thing, and let's set the text wrapping to clip. So how does that look? It seems really nice and clean, right? All right, the next thing in this section is text rotation. You can tilt your text or rotate it 90 degrees, which sometimes you may need. And the rest of these buttons we will cover in later modules as we dive deep into their different individual functions. So let's hold off on covering those for later modules. All right, so we've worked our way left to right on the toolbar. Let's look up here at the top at our format menu. We have number, which we looked at. There is text, alignment, wrapping, and rotation. There's also font size. So everything we've already learned on the toolbar is also here in the menu. There is one conditional formatting that we will cover later. I do want to point out there are keyboard shortcuts for almost everything. What I like about this format menu or the other menus in general, if you hover, it will tell you what the keyboard shortcut is. So for example, I'm on a Mac, so it's showing me the shortcuts here for bold, italics, and underline. It also shows me the shortcuts for alignment. So that can be very helpful if I forget or if I'm doing something and I think to myself, wow, I need to be a bit faster. Is there a shortcut for this? So you can refer to this when you need to. The last thing we have over here is clear formatting. So what is that? That is one of my favorite tricks. So let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and add another recipe. It's in a blog, so I'm going to copy and paste it over. Watch what happens when I do this. Okay, so look at that. It comes in not so great. It almost makes you mad because it messed up all of your formatting and all of your hard work. And now you feel like you have to create and reformat the whole spreadsheet. It can be so frustrating, but don't worry. I have the trick for you. Actually, I have two tricks and you guessed it. One of them involves keyboard shortcut. So let's select the cell or the cells that had that formatting that got messed up and let's select format menu and then select clear formatting. You can see from the menu, it also tells you what the keyboard shortcut is. Now on a PC, that is control backslash. So isn't that an awesome trick? You can copy and paste and then remove the formatting so it matches your spreadsheet. But wait, there's another way. I was copying and pasting so that you could see an example of how to use the clear formatting feature. Sometimes you will already have that data there to clear formatting, and sometimes you're going to be copying and pasting. But if you're copying and pasting, there's an even quicker way, and that is to use another keyboard shortcut. So instead of just using Command V to paste on a Mac, you can use Command Shift V. So all I did was add the Shift key to my already existing keyboard shortcut. On a PC, 
you are using control V to paste. So you're going to add a shift in there. Control shift V. You're just adding a shift key to this already existing paste keyboard shortcut and watch what that does. That combines pasting with clearing the format. So you are basically telling it to paste the values only. You're saying, Hey, paste without the formatting. Isn't that an awesome time saver? And an extra little pro tip. That is why you use the theme. You use the theme to select your font and your style, and you do not, do not, do not touch the font on the toolbar because when it clears that formatting, it is clearing the existing format of where it came from and it is applying your theme. But if you didn't pick your font from the theme and you use the toolbar to change different fonts for different columns and cells and whatever it may be, when you use this clear format option, it isn't really going to help you because it's going to clear it and set it to the theme. I can't stress this enough. Use theme, use a theme. Don't touch the font on the toolbar and use the clear formatting feature or the keyboard shortcut for pasting to save yourself a headache and time. Do you want another cool trick? Oh my goodness, the day that I learned about this trick, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe how much time I had been wasting in my years of using Google Sheets and other Google tools. Okay, so I'm preparing my grocery list for the week and I'm thinking about this meal. So I'm going to temporarily highlight it yellow and let's pretend like I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling through tons and tons and tons of recipes and I come across another one. Instead of having to click on the recipe, go to paint fill, select yellow. I can instead click on the cell that has the paint I want, and then I can paint it onto another cell. So click the paint roller icon that you see on your toolbar and click on the cell that you want to paint. I can even repeat that process and I can paint multiple cells so that I click and drag and it's painting all of them at once, just like this. So how fun is that? I love shortcuts like this that are huge time savers. Now I'll undo everything by using the arrow on the toolbar or using the keyboard shortcut command Z on a Mac, which is control Z on a PC. Okay, everyone. So take a few minutes to get your spreadsheet in order and formatted. You should have the beginnings of your recipe book and it should be formatted so that you can read everything and it looks visually appealing. So can you believe it? You have a Google sheet all set up and it doesn't involve large amounts of numbers and math. So that's it. You know how to start a Google sheet, pack up, you're done, go home. <laughs> this is only the beginning. There is so much more we can do. In our next modules, we will look at inserting links, inserting images, check boxes, notes, and comments, inserting everything. It's all about inserting. So come on over and meet me in the next module. Hi everyone. For exercise one, your directions are listed here on this very first tab of the Google Sheet. You will be working from the All tab that you can see here at the bottom. I do want to note that this data set came from data.gov and they do provide this Notes tab if you're interested in knowing a little bit more details about this data set. Okay, so your directions are to pick a theme. You're also going to create an engaging title and apply alternating colors to your data set. And then you're going to format the headings of the table and you'll end up needing to resize probably as you go along. And then you're going to format your data to be percentages. And lastly, you're going to use borders and freeze. You're welcome to apply any additional formatting that you feel makes this table more engaging and presentable. So pause the video and take your time working through these steps. When you're ready, press play so that you can see the solution worked out. All right, guys, how did you do? Let's take a look. First thing we're going to do is click on the all tab here at the bottom. Our first step is to pick a theme. So you're going to click on format at the top, click theme, and then pick any of these themes you would like and click customize. You can pick any font 
and you can change any colors if you would like to. When you're done, you're going to click done and click the X to remove this little pop-up window. And there you go. Next, we need to create an engaging title. There are many different ways for you to do this, and you can utilize a lot of different formatting techniques that you've learned. So there's no one right way to do this. There is a large amount of personal preference that goes into this. So here's what I personally like to do. I like to merge all of these cells on the first row. I'm then going to center align my text and I'm going to increase the font size. That means I'm going to have to resize my row just a little bit. And then I'm going to fill it in with a color from my theme and change my font color so it really pops out. Now that looks a little bit better. I'm going to repeat this so that my title consists of these two rows instead of the four that were given to us. And I'm going to delete any rows that I no longer need. And so you can see I'm making it my own and what I like personally. And there we go. Now we need to apply alternating colors to our data table. So let's first highlight all of our data. Then we're going to click format and alternating colors. Pick from the choices given and customize it to fit your style or your needs by clicking on the color drop down menus. You're going to click done when you're finished and the X to close out this pop out window if you want to hide it. And so you can see all of your data. This is looking so much better already. Let's go through and format our headings for all of this data, which will go hand in hand with our next step, which is to resize. I'm going to add this additional fill color on the second heading. I'm also going to fix the alignment so that it is centered both vertically and horizontally. And I'm going to use a text wrapping so that I can actually read these titles. Now, some of these headings are blank. Plus, I have headings that are squished into one cell. I'm going to use the merge tool so that the heading is properly over the set of data that it belongs to. I'm going to repeat this all the way across. That is looking better now, but I also need to go back through and resize some of these columns. Remember, you can double click or you can drag and drop and that looks much better. So we're almost there. Next, we need to format these percentages to be actual percentages. So I'm going to select the data and click the percentage icon on the toolbar and adjust the decimals. To work more efficiently, you can actually select the entire column and you can even select multiple columns at once, whichever one you prefer. And not only that, you can even use the paint format, which remember looks like the paint roller icon to paint this format across your data, which is a fun little trick. So use one of those options that works best for you and repeat that all the way across the data set. And there you go. I also think I want these headings bold, so I'm going to change that. And notice how formatting is sort of an ongoing process, not necessarily one and done. The more you begin to manipulate your data, your formatting preferences may change and that's perfectly fine. Okay, so this is a lot of data, so we're going to use borders to chunk it up into pieces. I'm going to group all of these categories together. Remember to select your style first, and then you select your border type. And then you repeat this across your data set until you are complete. I like to also add one thick border around the whole table at the very end, and I like to put some sort of border around these headings. All right, how does that look? Now that we have all of this formatting complete, we can actually freeze our columns and our rows so that we can see it as we move up and down or left and right. This data is a bit long, so I'm going to freeze all the way down to the headings because I think that would be helpful. So I'm going to freeze down to this row, and now when I scroll, I can still see my headings. Remember, you can also freeze columns for scrolling horizontally if that is something you would like to add as well. Okay, so you're welcome to add more formatting and make it your own. Again, it's all about personal preference here when it comes to formatting. And that's it. So how did you do? I'm sure you did a great job. So meet me over in the next module as we continue on our journey to learning about Google Sheets. For the next section, you'll want to download the course exercise files. Click the link below in the video description to get these. You can also scroll through the details to find timestamps for each section in this course. 
If you're enjoying this training, please leave us a comment. Welcome back everyone. We are here in Google Sheets in the recipe book that we have been building. We're going to take a look at how to insert links into a Google Sheet. So let's get started. If you recall, we have this column over here on the right, column H, where we were adding our links when we were adding our first couple of recipes. We were just adding these here temporarily so that we wouldn't lose them. But remember, if you're adding something to a Google Sheet, you're gonna copy your link from wherever that link is on the internet, whatever that site or that source, wherever you have found that link. These links that we have here, we pasted in as text but they don't look really nice and clean. So that's why we're gonna look at how to properly add and insert links into a Google Sheet. So step one is to copy the link. We have a few in here, so I'm going to go over here and click on the link, and then I'm going to click on the copy icon. Remember, you may be pulling your link from somewhere else on the internet, so go ahead and copy your link wherever it may be coming from. Our second step is to click on the cell where we want to put the link. Kind of like the title of the recipe maybe. Maybe that's where we want to put our link. So I'm going to click on the recipe title. Now our third step is to add the link. Now there are multiple ways for us to add links in Google Sheets. You can right click and then select insert link or you can click the link icon on the toolbar, or my favorite way is to use a keyboard shortcut, which is Command K on a Mac or Control K if you're on a PC. No matter which option you chose, you will get this little pop-up window where you will paste your link and then you're gonna press the return key to apply the link. Notice the color that it turned my text. It's also underlined to indicate a hyperlink. So that's how you add a link. You copy the link from its source, click on the cell, use one of those options, right click the icon on the toolbar or the keyboard shortcut, and then you paste it and there you go. Now for our recipe book, you may have found that you do not like changing these recipe titles to the links of the recipe. Also, now when you scroll through the recipes, you're going to have this little pop-up window of the website. Maybe you're fine with that, maybe you like that, or maybe that bothers you, and that's okay. There are a lot of options that we have here when we're adding links into our Google Sheet. It comes down to what works best for you and your data set. So I'm going to undo what I did, and I'm going to show you another thing that you can do that may look a little bit cleaner for you. I'm going to click on the cell again, and then remember, I'm going to use our little secret keyboard shortcut, which is command return on a Mac or alt return on a PC. And that allows us to enter a new line within a single cell. So I'm going to write the word link, or you can write the word recipe link or whatever would work for you. Then you're going to highlight just that word or words, and you can either use the link icon on the toolbar or our keyboard shortcut. We're going to press enter and there we go. Does that look better? What do you think? So there you go. Repeat that process for your other recipes. Remember to copy the link. You can add the words link or recipe link. You can highlight it and then either use the toolbar or the keyboard shortcut to create that hyperlink. Again, it can go here with the title of the recipe, or maybe you prefer for it to be over in its own column. Now, with this option, when you scroll through here, you will still see a preview of the link as you scroll down and look at the different recipes. So, some people do not like to have that pop up and others do, so it depends on what you have with your data here in Google Sheets. If you want, you can add a column with links. So you can use this exact same technique to clean up what we already have. So I'm gonna actually click on the link that we have over here in column H. I'm gonna click on the pencil icon and then where you see the word text is what will appear for this link in the cell. So I'm gonna change that to link or recipe link or anything that you would prefer. And then I'm gonna press the return key when I'm done. And there we go. Now that looks much nicer and cleaner in my Google Sheet. 
So I want you to pick whichever process works best for you and apply it to all of the recipes in your recipe book to get it nice and cleaned up. So take some time to work on that, add more recipes as you find them, and really begin building up this recipe book. Now you have learned how to add links in Google Sheets that are clean. This is important because you do not want links to take away from the data or be a distraction. Next up, we're going to look at adding images to our recipes, which is one trick that is really going to take our recipe book to a whole new level. So come on over and join me in the next module. Welcome back everyone. Look at our recipe book that we've been building in Google Sheets. We have completed a lot of formatting and we've recently added the links to our recipes. Now we're going to fill in this column that we set up a while back with images of our recipes. This will help us as we scroll through our recipe book looking for something. You can also imagine that there are other times with other sets of data where images will be helpful. So let's dive right in and look at how to insert images. We're going to start with our very first recipe here, baked apple pork chops with green beans. Our first step is to click on the cell and then at the top, we're going to click insert. From the menu, we're going to select image and you will see that there are two options, insert image in cells and insert image over cells. We're going to look at what happens with both, but for now we're going to use the in cells and look at all of the ways that you can pull the actual image. When you select either option, this window is going to open. You can pull images from your computer with upload. You can also use your computer's camera to take a picture, which you may or may not use as often as the others, but it is a pretty cool option to have. There is also by URL, which means you can pull the URL from somewhere on the internet. And we're going to test that one out in just a little bit. There's also the option for photos, which refers to Google photos. And then we have Google drive. If your image is located there. And then last there's a Google search. If you want to search for the image for the first one, we're going to use upload. I have this image on my computer, so I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop it here. And there it goes. Notice how it snapped the size of the image to fit perfectly in the cell. That's one of the positives of using insert image in cells. I'm actually going to delete this and look at another way that we can add this image. So again, I'm going to click insert. I'm going to click insert image in cells. This time I'm going to do by URL. So for this recipe, I have opened this image of the recipe so that I have the URL. There are multiple ways to get images from sites on the internet, such as a blog or the recipe. One way is to right click on the image and you'll have one or more options. For example, open image in a new tab is the option that I used to get this image here today. And then I can copy the URL that I have at the top of my web browser, or I could have selected copy image URL directly and saved a step. So copy your URL and return to your Google sheet. You're going to paste in that URL and click insert image. And there you go. It looks the same, right? Using the URL and uploading directly from your computer are probably the two most common options. So again, let's do our second recipe. You can go directly to the place where this recipe is located. We're going to right click on the image that you want and then click copy image URL and return back to Google sheets, or we're going to click insert, insert image in cells, select by URL, and then paste in that URL, click insert image. And there we go. It's really nice how it snaps to resize it to fit the cell. Let's look at a couple more options for adding images. So I'm going to delete out this image again and let's try again, go to insert and let's look at photos. Remember photos refers to our Google photos. If you happen to be using those, you may have images that are in your Google drive. So you can click on that and you can search for your image or you can navigate through your Google drive to where that image is located. So you're going to double click the image or you can click on the image. It turns blue and click insert. 
And there we go. So that image came from our Google Drive this time. So let's look at our last option, which is to search Google directly. I'm going to use our green bean casserole for this because it is a rather common recipe. The others may not have really shown up in a Google search. So again, I'm going to make sure I am over the cell where I want the image to be. I'm going to click the insert menu and then insert image in cells. And now I'm going to go over to Google image search. So you can search just like you would on Google. And as I do that, I'm going to select whichever image I want. Notice it turns blue and then I can click insert. And here we go again. It snapped it so that the whole image fits in the cell perfectly. Okay. So we've learned how to add our images so far. We've added them in cells. As the name applies in cells means the image will be inside of a cell, just like text is inside of a cell. If it's inside of a cell, that means we can change the size as we change the column and row sizes like this. Notice how the images are changing size with the size of the cell. It also means that you can apply alignment to these images. So you can align them to the top, bottom, left, right, center. What is really great about this option is the image will snap to the size of the cell. You don't have to worry about changing it as you go. Now, if you do want to control the size more directly, you can use over cells. So let's look at this option. I'm going to add this image of our baked apple pork chops so that you can compare the two. Notice the options are the same. So I'm going to drag and drop the image that I have on my computer. The image loads over the cells, which typically is the original image size. So it does tend to come in rather large. I can now pick it up and move it and resize it. Now it does hold in place as I scroll up and down or left to right on my Google sheet. It does stay in place. So that is nice. I say that, but there have been times when I've opened a Google sheet weeks or months later. And on that very first time loading, the images are just not in the correct places. And so I do have to X out and come back in and that usually fixes it itself. Just know that with this option, it can be a little bit more glitchy versus using in cells. So just keep that in mind when you're deciding between which option to use. Now, also because it is over cells, that means as I resize my columns and my rows, the image doesn't move. I want you to think about your project and your needs. That could either be a good thing or a not so good thing that the image doesn't move as you adjust your rows and columns. One last thing, remember that grouping that we did a while back. Let's click that group icon that looks like a little minus. So it temporarily hides our ingredients and directions columns. Notice the size of the images snapped down to reflect the smaller view of our data, which is our recipe book. In this case, we can click on the plus to open our group back up and see our recipes and notice that the images snapped back to that larger size. So again, having these responsive images like this is probably what makes using in cells so great as opposed to using over cells. Okay, everyone. Now our recipe book looks like a real recipe book. You know how to add all of this information. You know how to format, you know how to add the links and add images. And up until now, we only had a few recipes here in our recipe book, but now you have the skills to start adding all the recipes that you want. So between now and the next few modules, I want you to begin adding as many recipes as you can. The more you add with greater variety, the more you'll be able to do in our later modules where we will learn to organize it and work with it. So go have fun and then meet me over in the next module. Welcome back everyone. Before you run away, because it says we're going to learn how to insert drawings. Let me go ahead and just say it doesn't mean the drawings you are thinking of. You do not need to be an artist or have any type of handmade or digitally made drawings. This feature of Google sheets refers to Google drawings, which you'll be surprised really opens up endless possibilities for using Google sheets. So let's get started. Okay, everyone, let's start with what 
is Google Drawings. This is Google Drawings. You can access it from your Google Drive or multiple ways, just like Google Sheets. You know you are in Google Drawings with this red icon. It's essentially Google's version of a one-page blank canvas. Some people refer to it as like a single Google slide or as Google's sort of poster maker, sort of like a version before Canva came along and became popular. It has a lot of uses in the education field, so you may already know how to use Google Drawings and you can transfer those skills here to Google Sheets. Now on the toolbar, you see that you can add shapes, text boxes, and images. So let's go back over to Google Sheets and you can click Insert and then Drawings, which again refers to Google Drawings. Notice it just looks like a mini version of that real Google Drawings that we just saw. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add two boxes to show you something. One reason why people like to use drawings in Sheets is the ability to drag and drop objects, such as sorting or organizing, whatever it may be. So I'm going to get these two in here. And now you can see that I can drag and drop these two and move them around. So imagine I had the days of the week and a whole assortment of recipes. I could then easily drag and drop and place them in order for what recipes I wanted to do this week. To get out of here, we're gonna click save and close. And now I can see what it looks like. Sometimes you may need to zoom out to find where that drawing ended up. It places a drawing in sheets as if it was an image. So remember, we learned how to add images over cells. That is basically what this Google drawing is. It is applied as an image over cells. And just like images, you can resize them and you can move them. You can double click to reopen the drawing and edit it. Notice that the image we saw didn't represent the entire space. That's because it tries to be extra smart for you and really only show you what it thinks that you need or want. If for some reason you want all of that extra space to be shown, here's a little secret that I like to use. I put a border by adding a box and making it transparent and putting it in the back. Again, we're not really focusing on Google Drawing skills right now. We're just looking at how you can get drawings into sheets and why you would even want to. So I'm going to click Save and Close. And this time you can see the entire drawing is showing. And this time it has the border around it. So that's just a little trick if you're using Google Drawings in Google Sheets. Let's take this and look at another reason why people use Google Drawings in Google Sheets. As the name Drawings implies, people like to use this to create more artistic and fancy titles or icons. So let's edit this drawing that we have. Again, you can double click as we did before, or you can click the three dots and click edit. I'm going to use this circle to make a more fancy title for the recipe. I can use all sorts of Google Drawings features to format it and increase the font size. I'm going to click Save and Close when I'm done, and I have it the way that I want it. I'm going to place it where I want it here in Google Sheets. Remember, this treats it as an image over cells so that I can resize it and I can move it to wherever I want it. And there we go. So that's what it would look like. Now, Speaking of artistic titles, here's another secret. People like to use this for word art. Within the Google Suite, you'll see word art within Google Slides. But when Google Drawings was launched, it too had word art. Because you can put a Google Drawing inside of Google Sheets, that means you can put word art in Google Sheets. So let's change this circle to word art. So I'm going to delete the circle that I had and I'm going to go to actions and then word art. I can type what the text is and there we go. Now I can use all the different formatting features of Google Drawings to design this title the way that I would like to. And just like before, when we're done, click save and close and there you go. Now, I personally like to use this when I'm turning a particular data set into a more presentation type format for some sort of meeting with colleagues or stakeholders to discuss a set of data. It's either 
do that here in Google Sheets, or I would have to make Google Slides and sort of pull out my charts and graphs and tables and data out of my Google Sheet and into the slides for the presentation. So use this great little secret whenever you find a need or you want to dress up your data for some sort of presentation. Okay, so speaking of secrets with Google Drawings, there's another hidden secret and reason why people love using Google Drawings and Sheets. It's completely unexpected. It's adding videos. Yes, I know that sounds silly, but yes. And I wish there was a more straightforward and simple way for you to add a video into Google Sheets. But for now, we have to use this little Google Drawings secret. Okay, so let's go to Google Drawings for a second. One hidden feature of drawings is that you can paste in a video that you have in slides. So if you have a video in Google Slides, you can copy it, come to drawings and paste it. See how that works? Okay, so that means there is a way for us to get videos into Google Drawings. Because we have Google Drawings in Google Sheets, we can do the same thing. So it's not an option under the insert menu, but you can copy and paste. Now remember our keyboard shortcuts are control C and control V on a PC for copying and pasting. It's command C and command V on a Mac for copying and pasting. We have a video in Google slides. We're going to copy that, come over to Google sheets, click insert drawings, just like we've done before. We're going to right click to paste or use our keyboard shortcuts. And there we go. You can stretch it out to fit the size of this window and we're ready. Click save and close. Again, it's treated like an image over cells so you can resize it and move it. In the case of our recipe book, maybe you want to add a column for videos like this. So as you scroll, notice it does keep our videos in place, which is nice. Now here's one little trick to actually watch the video. You're going to need to double click to open up the drawing and then you can press play. And then when you're done watching your video, click save and close to get back out of here. So again, that is a little trick of pulling videos into Google Sheets. Your video will first need to be in Google Slides and then you can copy it and bring it here into Google Sheets via Google Drawings. Okay, everyone, that was a lot. So let's recenter back on how you may actually use this in your recipe book. I have this drawing over here for you, so you can double click to open it. You may like to have a drawing like this to type out your meals for the week. Maybe it's just your lunches or your dinners, or maybe you want to actually write out breakfast, lunch, and dinner for each day of the week like this. This is just an idea. In a later module, we're going to look at adding an entire new tab to our Google Sheet that allows you to do this more fully. And guess what? It's going to let you pull down with a drop down menu all of your recipes so you can just select from the list. Yeah. It will be amazing, so definitely stay tuned for that. But if you prefer, you can also just use a Google drawing like this. All right, guys, we made it. Not at all what you expected out of inserting drawings, right? It really does open up so many more possibilities for Google Sheets. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get the course exercise files and follow along with this video, Click over there and click over there to watch more videos on YouTube from Simon Says It.